Hi, I'm Mary Harrell for Tan Books. Is it really possible for a man to change his sexual orientation from gay to straight? Aren't gay men just born that way? With the increasing normalization of homosexuality in our society and even in our church, is there hope for men who struggle with unwanted homosexual feelings and desires. Author A.J. Benjamin says yes, and he says yes because he has lived it. A.J. is the author of the book out by Tan Books called When the Sun Frees You, A Catholic Man's Journey of Healing from Same-Sex Attraction. A.J. holds a master's in counseling from Franciscan University at Steubenville and works as a public high school English teacher. But the great joy of his life is being married for 20 years to his wife and being the father to their three sons. AJ, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. AJ, the question we started with a minute ago was, do you think you or other men were born gay? What is your take? Uh, no, the, the long and short of that is no, I do not believe that. I think it's a complex interaction with a lot of different things. Uh, and in fact, most of the, the more recent research that has come out in the last five to 10 years has supported the notion that it's multifaceted rather than being born a certain way. Uh, sexuality seems to have a lot of different components, which ironically is what the church has always taught uh, in one form or another. Uh, but now science is validating that so much so that the APA uh, originally had a statement that supported uh, a largely genetic basis for the origins of homosexuality. And they have since backed off from that and adopted the view that we really just don't know exactly how it happens. And so they, they no longer subscribe to that genetic theory um, you know, that you're born gay. So if we're not, the question is, if we're not born gay, well, then that means that there's got to be some other things in play. Um, and so that's where, uh, where I think the culturally, where the shift occurs between what we as Christians believe and what everybody else believes. We, of course, have the paradigm for human sexuality as outlined by the church, uh, you know, male and female as the, the essence of um, creation, you know, the, the building block of creation and the image of God in the world. Um, so that is, we are XXXY, no matter how, how we want to slice that uh, no matter, we can say that there are anomalies, and there are, we can say that um, we may not be as comfortable in our given um, chromosomal uh, sexual identity, um, a biological sexual identity as we are, but we really can't say that we're just born attracted to one sex or the other. AJ, since in the four years that you've written the book, um, there has been a, a trans sexual craze that has really swept through the culture as well. That now it's not just our rainbow flag that we, you know, we must salute and fly as a country to have cultural approval. N now you must say that a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man. Do you feel like the culture really has jumped the shark past the, the gay, can you be born gay or is it, you know, culturally set in past that to now saying, you are so far beyond this. And then now we are saying that men can be women. How do you, how has seeing that last four years changed your view of the whole debate? Well, it really hasn't changed my view at all. Uh, I still maintain that we are, are men or women uh, and we may, may have, you know, uh, different ways of expressing that, different gender identities perhaps, but definitely there's no, a man is a man and a woman is a woman. Um, you know, and somebody, it, it was actually, a, a, it was actually, when you look at nature, if you have a fee, if you have a male dog and you take that dog and you have that dog neutered, which usually involves, you know, a medical castration, is it still a male dog? And the answer is, if you if you have a dog, you know, it's still a male dog, you know, regardless of, of what happens, uh, you can't unmake someone male or female. Um, even no matter what sort of surgeries or drugs you give, it, it's not going to be the same as if it were following the genetic imprint of male and female. Um, the transgender is simply, I think, a, an extension. Well, if we if we can if we're attracted to people of the same sex, then why can't we just be somebody that's a different sex? You know, if it's all a social construct, then anything really goes. 
And I think that's really the point where we are. There's, there's no scientific validation to any of this. In fact, all the science that's coming out now is saying that those who um, employ the gender reassignment surgeries and things like that, although they may have some initial satisfaction with the results, often uh, either go back to their state of mental happiness that they were before or in fact get worse after mm -hmm. the fact. So it doesn't really, uh, what the church has always taught seems to be holding true regardless of um, what society is telling us, what labels we're putting on it, or what sort of a cultural uh, moray we're trying to introduce into the equation. AJ, obviously this is quite a, a hot topic in culture still today, just as it was when the book came out. Why did you initially choose to share your story publicly, to write this book, to put this whole um, really personal testimony out in published form? That's a great question. Um, the, the main reason that I, and more of my story is actually in the book, but the main reason I did it was because I, I was confused by a lot of this ideology. You know, I, I went to a public college. Um, and I was confused. And back then it was you were born gay. That was that was the narrative, which isn't quite the same anymore. But um, it's it's I got I was confused by it. I bought into it. I thought I had to be gay. I had to embrace that label that somebody else had actually chosen for me, um, you know, and I had to express that sexually, you know, with another man or I was not going to be happy while. Well, I found out that there, there's another way, you know, that, that there is a uh, there is a way of healing and wholeness and integration. And I felt that the Lord was really calling me to share that with this generation. Because I think even in the church, we've really lost our way as far as ministering to people who experience this. And really, the, the, the only thing that works in today's society is a personal story. You could tell people left you know, as, as as the day is long, that God only made two genders, there's two sexes, um, and God only wills for there to be male and female. We can explain the rules, we can explain the benefits, we can do anything, but really, it's about the story. It's about the personal witness. And if we don't put our stories out there, so people know that there's another way. I don't really know how else we would possibly engage the culture which has gone so far off the path of, of uh, natural law and of just really a basic agreement on what constitutes humanity. AJ, were you raised Catholic and then fell away and then came back to the church? Or was there some other spark of faith in your story after living with same-sex attraction that brought you back to the sacraments and back into grace? I actually, uh, I never lived uh, any sort of a, a homosexual lifestyle. Uh, most of, of my, most of my, um, I guess, my sins were really ones of my, you know, my own imagination, um, you know, masturbation, that sort of thing. Uh, and really just enclosing on myself, um, lusting after men, things like that. So I, and I, I never really abandoned the sacraments. I was going to confession an awful lot, um, but the, my problem was not that, uh, but rather that I thought I was stuck in that. I thought I had to be that way my whole life. Uh, and for some people, um, there's, there's, there's no uh, one way that same-sex attraction develops in any two people or in any, or, in, or more than two people, actually. Um, if you hear people's stories, although there's similarities, there's different, different, other scenarios that go along with it that influence how things can turn out. Um, so, you know, for me, it, it wasn't a matter of having necessarily a conversion or a reversion, but rather understanding uh, the healing power of Jesus Christ. And I really, if, you, if there was a conversion, it was, it was not that I went away and came back, but rather that I went from, I guess, going through the motions of my faith to having a living faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what led me to healing and wholeness. So those sacraments that I had always received were suddenly activated in my life. And once I, I always knew him, 
But once I realized that he knew me, that was the life changer. AJ, in your opinion, how well is the church ministering to Catholics who are struggling with same-sex attraction? I know there was, we just had the major confusion around Pope Francis. Can we bless same-sex unions or not? I've had plenty of fallen away, fallen away Catholics come to me and say, what's the Pope doing with this? And I would have to say, I don't really know. So I find it confusing as well. So what is your take on how our church has been ministering to people struggling with that? Well, I, th I think you and I and just about any other Catholic who is serious about his or her faith is probably having the same sort of a, some questions in their mind. What is the Pope doing? Um, and I, I, I don't really know. Um, he certainly seems to come out very strongly against things like gender, gender ideology. And then, of course, that the whole recent controversy about his uh, a choice of using Italian slurs to describe right. people in the homosexual community is, a, again, a head scratcher. I, I don't even know why you would say such a thing, you know. And then uh, just the other day, he invites Father James Martin, who is a, an abject heretic, quite frankly, um, into the Vatican. Now, now, to the Pope's credit, Martin's saying what the Pope says, but we haven't heard that from the Pope. But the fact that certainly um, the Pope has done things for people like Father Martin and other and others like him that certainly seem to lend his implicit support. But then he, he is very clear that this is not church teaching, particularly that ABC interview. He was really quite clear on, on what happened with the the same sex, the blessings for same sex unions. And they say that if, if you, I, I don't know Italian, but if you actually listen to the translation of what the Pope said, they actually invoked natural law against it, um, which is very consistent with what the church has always taught. So I, 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 don't, I don't know, uh, to answer your question, how well is the church doing? Um, if we're talking about the top, you know, the top brass, so to speak, I think we've got a little work to do um, as far as clarifying terms of the Pope's ministry. He's got two jobs that are given to him in the Bible to wield the power of the keys and to bind and loose. And he, he doesn't really seem to be doing much of either of those with any and to confirm the brethren, of course. Um, he doesn't seem to be doing really any of those to any great degree. Not to be critical, but but as far as you know, the leadership of the church, that seems to be what's happening, and there seems to be a wide disparity among bishops as to what constitutes effective ministry uh, to people with same-sex attraction. And I think the people, unfortunately, who are getting lost in the middle of all these debates is the people with same-sex attraction and the transgender people, because we're really not presenting a unified front. Um, for whatever reason, um, it's just it's not, you know, it's not cohesive. It's not clear. And mm -hmm. until it is, I, I, I don't think other than this grassroots kind of ministry that we do, I don't think we're going to have a, a, a real solid approach to things. What would you say to a man, Catholic or otherwise, who is struggling with sexual orientation, with his sexual identity, who is struggling to find a way through that? I would say, first of all, Definitely take that to prayer as your foundation. Now, I'm not saying pray the gay away. That, that's not at all what I'm saying. But what I am saying is always make sure that uh, you center yourself in prayer and the sacraments and really cultivate a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That is first and foremost. The second thing I would say is um, if, if you and, and this, this is not a requirement. This is what I did. I found it helpful. Um, Again, because sexu our sexualities do not develop identically in anyone, even in identical twins, um, you know, there, there are still often great variants as far as how sexuality develops. Um, if you feel so inclined to explore some of the causes of uh, that same-sex attraction, I would encourage um, you to do so. Um, yeah, be careful, obviously, who you're asking, but there's still, even though there's there's a lot of you know censorship out there, there's still a lot of good resources out there. There's still a lot of good people who are teaching the truth about human sexuality, um, and I, I would encourage them to explore that that worldview and adopt that worldview as as the God-given worldview 
as their own first, and then if they can, if they choose to pursue healing and um, you know and work on their own personal growth, I would encourage it. At least try it. If it doesn't work out for you, you haven't lost anything. Um, you know, it's it's it. But it's I I think it's better tried and maybe not get as far as you want than to not try it at all. Um, so that's what I, I would say. Look, at, look into the possibility that this is not as unchangeable as you think it is. And I also would say it, it's not like, and people would say, even, even the way the, 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 um, the blurb on the, on the back of my book is written, it's really not about going from gay to straight. There's no, those are labels. Straight's as much of a label as gay. Everybody's sexuality is different. And it's coming to terms with his or her own sexuality that makes us uh, the, the integrated man or woman that we can be. Uh, and sometimes you have to explore really painful parts of yourself that maybe you wish weren't there uh, or maybe you wish uh, had developed differently. But, it's, but that is also the walk of a Christian. And that's why people often talk about conversion therapy. That's kind of a, a misnomer. You're either having a conversion or you're going through psychotherapy. I like some of the other terms for it better, reintegrative, that sort of thing. Um, conversion entails a closer walk with Christ in whatever venue and whatever way he wants to walk with you and to whatever degree of healing he wants to give you. Therapy can aid with that. But the, the primary goal is always conversion to Christ not elimination of this desire or that desire necessarily, although that may come with that integration. If Christ is the center and Christ is the goal, everything else will be added on later on. Wise words. Again, the book is When the Sun Frees You. You can find it right here on tanbooks.com or ask for it at your local Catholic bookseller. AJ, tell our listeners where they can go online to learn more about you and um, find support if they're going through a cross like you had. My website is thesilentnight.net. Um, that's the silent night. Um, silent is K-N-I-G-H-T, um, all one word. The silent night, like the Christmas carol, but not night like no sun, but night like uh, K-N-I-G-H-T. Um, the silent night dot net. And that's got uh, ways they can contact me. It's got some resources on there. Um, and I'm, I usually get back to people fairly quickly if they reach out via the website. Fantastic. AJ, thanks so much for being with us. And God bless you and your family. Thank you for having me. I appreciate your time. Mm -hmm.